Am I the a-hole for telling my dad he wasn't going to be walking me down the aisle? Me 28 female and my husband 34 male got married two days ago. My mother and stepfather walked me down the aisle. Backstory My father 48 male and my mother 47 female had me when they were very young. They were both in conflict for the first couple years of my life and my dad ended up leaving us. My mom went through a court case and ended up getting full custody of me, which wasn't that hard as my dad was nowhere to be found. A year after getting custody of me, my mom met my stepdad, 50 male, and fell for him immediately. They dated for a couple years, then eloped. My stepdad legally adopted me and we were one happy family. When I was 15, my mother told me that my birth father had contacted her and was trying to get contact with me. She told me I didn't have to meet him if I didn't want to, but she thought it would be good for me to know my father. I decided to meet with him, and he explained that at the time he was not financially stable enough to take care of me, and it was draining on his mental health, which is the reason for him leaving. I forgave him as he is still my father and I wanted a relationship with him. I started meeting him once a week and started building an okay relationship with him. I still wasn't 100% sure about him, but I wanted to give him a second chance. When I went to university, me and my dad grew out of touch a bit and I would only see him a couple times a year but I always had a relationship with him. Skip to three months ago, my fiancé proposed to me and I was over the moon. I called my mother and stepdad immediately and told them and they were ecstatic for me. I asked them at a dinner a week later if they could walk me down the aisle and if my stepdad could give me away. They said yes and my stepdad was so overjoyed that I thought of him that he even cried when I asked him. A few days later, my dad called me, fuming. I'm just gonna write how the conversation went. Him. How could you not tell me sooner? As your father, I have a right to know first. Do you know how embarrassing it is to know that I found out at the same time as some random friend of your fiancé? Me. I only told a few people. And that was because those people were in the wedding ceremony and therefore needed to find an outfit quicker than the people I sent the invites to. Pause. Him. But I'm walking you down the aisle. I am in the wedding ceremony. Me. My mom and Josh, stepdad, are walking me. Him. You're supposed to be walked by your father, not some tramp your mom found on the street. Me? He's not some tramp. And legally, he is my father. He adopted me while you were God knows where after you left me. He's more of a father than you ever were and ever could be. He hangs up. He responded to the wedding invites with a cannot attend and hasn't spoken to me since. I don't know what to do as I do want him in my life. But should I have just let him walk me down the aisle? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. His reaction says everything about him. It's not about you at all. He can't take back those life choices or redo all the missed years. He now sees the consequences and they hurt. That's his problem, not yours. The guy's probably more concerned with how he would look if his daughter rather have her real father walk her down instead of her bio father. Shows what kind of self-centered man he is. Couldn't be bothered staying in touch with his daughter because me, me, me. And now he expects to walk her down because he is in her life for some years again. Again, me, me, me. Also talking down on the man that raised his daughter, instead of being grateful that the guy actually cared enough about Opie. The man only cares about himself. Not the a-hole. Your birth father chose to leave you and only got in touch when your mom was done with the difficult parts of having a child. Your stepdad is your family. He raised you. Of course you want him to walk you down the aisle. Agreed. I have a cousin who justified leaving his wife and infant daughter with similar logic. The financial pressure was too much and messing with his mental health. He treated his family like a gym membership he couldn't afford and just canceled it. This cousin is the most obvious narcissist I know. I know a few who I think are more toxic slash dangerous but less obvious about it. So it's no surprise Opie's dad is a self-centered a-hole. He prioritized himself above his family when he left them and he obviously has not changed since. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for saying that my sister will always be a priority and I'd put her on the same level as my own kids? I, 34 male, have a sister, Caitlin, 21 female. We have a decent age gap. We're technically half-siblings but never use the term. Her dad left her before she was born and our mom died when I was 22 and Caitlin was 9. As I'd essentially helped my mom raise her, I gained custody and continued to raise her. I adopted her when she was 12, and while we do still refer to each other as brother and sister, she will always be my first kid. I changed her diapers. I started clothing and feeding her long before our mom died as our mom needed help financially. 
I was there for every nightmare. Temper tantrum survived the hormonal teenage years. She's my kid. No doubting that. Caitlin is at college now, but she still lives with me on breaks. I've been dating my current girlfriend, Abby, 32 female, for 8 months now. We've began talking about the future, what we see for ourselves, etc. I mentioned that it was important to me that Caitlin always had a home with me, that I'd always want a room set aside for her, etc. Abby was somewhat hesitant and asked why. I told her that if anything happened, I'd want Caitlin to have a safe place to land. Abby doesn't like that. She asked what happens when we have kids. I said I could care for all of them, but Caitlin is my first kid and should be a priority. Same as the rest. I do the same for any kid we had. Abby got pissed and said our kids would be my real kids and they should come before Caitlin. I refused. She told me this was wrong and I'd be a horrible father if I acted like this. Our hypothetical kids deserved better, etc. Am I the a-hole? Info. Buy a room set aside for her. You intend to have separate rooms for every kid you take care of? That can get unwieldy very fast. If you're saying that you want a general guest room that Caitlin can use anytime she needs it, that's one thing. But her own room that's only for her when she's now an adult and theoretically wouldn't be living with you? That seems a bit of an overkill. Most people can't or won't do that for their adult children. Because, well, they're adults. Yeah, it'd be more like a guest room. Though, of course, my biological kids will also have their own rooms to fall back on. It sounds to me that you and your girlfriend have had a major miscommunication about all this then. The girlfriend didn't object to having a room set aside. She objected to the very idea that Caitlin would have a place of equal importance and similar character in Opie's life to their hypothetical future children. I don't think that's a miscommunication. Not day home. This is the red flag you need to move on. This isn't someone you want to build a life with. Here's the thing. Opie really needs to think through what does it mean to have a room dedicated to an adult. Not now, but at some point. In your home. I understand the desire to make sure she always has somewhere to go. But buying three-bedroom home is different from buying a four or five depending on kids and life in general. Many people use bedrooms as offices. At some point, there has to be some sort of reasonable balance and expectation that little sister is responsible for and can manage her own life. I'm still going with the not day hall because of the whole real kids thing. Particularly in an eight-month relationship. It screams no compassion. However, I still think Opie needs to think more broadly and longer term. Lots of people have guest rooms, though. Mine also doubles as a crafting room, etc. But if my adult kid needs it, it will always be theirs. Having a room that can become their space doesn't always look like a dedicated room. Next story. Am I the a-hole for taking back my offer to help with my friend's wedding? Last year, my friend Jess, 35 female, finally got engaged to the man she's been dating for the past 15 years. We live in a high cost of living city and Jess's finances have always been very tight. Her wedding budget was $5,000. It's workable since she works in catering and has connections and her fiancé's family has a house with a big yard. I offered to take pictures for free. I'm an amateur photographer with a basic gear and a background in photojournalism. I'm not going to be hired to shoot for Martha Stewart's weddings, but I would have provided some nice pictures. Jess turned me down, citing my lack of a wedding portfolio. I thought that maybe she or her fiancé had access to someone with more experience, and I ignored her unusually snotty tone when she said, thanks, but no thanks. Fast forward to last Thursday, Jess calls me in tears because she does not have a photographer. Neither she nor her fiancé know anyone else, and she doesn't want to count on guests' camera photos. She asked if I can take pictures. I was more than happy to do so at the wedding at reception, but she wanted me to shoot the whole day. Her getting ready, traveling to the venue, the wedding ceremony, and her and her fiancé leaving the reception. I said I had other commitments that morning, but reiterated that I could show up an hour before the wedding to get some before shots and take photos at the ceremony and reception, including the usual post photos, family, wedding party, etc. She said I could either take photos for the entire day or not bother even coming to the wedding as a guest. She got married this past Saturday and I wasn't there. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. She just wanted to use you as a last resort. She didn't consider your feelings or life at all. I don't think Jess is a friend to you. Not the a-hole. You know now where you stand. Do the whole day for free or not at all? Wow. Congratulations for standing up for yourself. Just think of the lack of gratitude and criticism of the pictures you would have taken. 
You dodged a bullet. I'm so sorry. Huge bullet dodged. Sounds like this was a pretty poorly organized event given that Bride was scrambling for something as important as a photographer last minute. But there were similar problems with the food and drinks given the low budget and poor planning. Opie saved herself time and gift money by not going to this miserable wedding. I don't think there even was another photographer. The bride probably planned on doing this all along to get free emergency photography from someone who had spent time and money investing in it. Reddit may have skewed my viewpoint though. Not day hole. Let me see if I understand this correctly. So you offered to do her whole wedding for free and she said no, only to call last minute and demand you come and work a full day. Worst yet. When you offer to do your best, she rescinds the invitation to the wedding because your insanely free offer isn't good enough? Yeah, this isn't an AITA question. This is a why the heck was this person considered a friend to begin with question. Not today, Hall, and please get better friends. You seem like you deserve some great ones. This is honestly the one moment of a hole in all of our years of friendship. You know how stuff like this happens, and when you think back, you realize, oh yeah. There was also that time, and that time too. There wasn't any of that in our history. Until now, she's been a thoughtful, kind, and a good friend. So it's easy to think this trust might have gotten to her. Well, you're the only one who can decide how important it is to keep her in your life. If it were me and we were really good friends, I'd give her a couple of weeks and reach out for lunch. Talk about what happened and how it hurt you. And what's worse is that because of it, you didn't get to share that day with her. See how she responds but she owes you a huge apology. She might come to her senses and reach out, and she might not. Or she might be too ashamed to reach out. But again, it's really up to you how much you want to put into salvaging the friendship. You're certainly not a day-haul, and you're the one who's been wronged here. I think I'll give this two weeks. If she reaches out to me to talk, I'll definitely meet up with her. I'll figure out how I feel about reaching out if I don't hear from her in that time, though. Now, for the last story... Am I a hull for helping my sister elope and giving her my grandmother's special ring? Some background to help understand the family dynamic. My 22, parents aren't understanding people. Dad, 57, is significantly worse. He thinks his way is the correct way and we always need to learn from him. He's very, very close to his siblings, especially my uncle Peter, 60, and always likes to take their opinions. I have a sister, Laura, 28. She's amazing but kind of soft and gets emotional pretty easy. Growing up, my parents were manipulative and borderline emotionally abusive towards her. And I think she also tried to shelter me in a way, so my experiences growing up were quite different from hers. I thought she was just a drama queen and didn't realize until I got older. I'd say mom has changed and tries to be supportive now, but dad's still good all dad. Me and Laura are close, but she's not as close to our parents, especially dad, but she still talks to them. My grams, dad's mom, gave me a ring as a gift for my 18th, which granddad had gifted her a long time back. It's not worth a lot, but definitely a special piece. Okay, now to the issue at hand. A couple years back, Laura went on a date or two with a guy, Harry, 30, I think, but nothing came of it. Fast forward to now, it turns out this guy, Harry, is from a very upper-class family, and Uncle Peter is friends with his dad. I guess at one point, Harry mentioned to him that he went on a date with Laura and Peter and his wife pretty much lost their minds, trying to get them back together and other nonsense. Meanwhile, Laura's been with Jack, 34, for over a year now and they're serious. Dad, of course, sat Laura down to convince her that Harry is the one. Also a side note, it's not like Jack is unemployed or something. He's an attorney and has a good background. I know there was a massive argument between all of them after Laura found out that Dad had literally gone to Jack and told him to leave her. Jack brought up the idea of eloping. I encouraged it, and Laura agreed. Me and a few others from Jack's side helped them set up everything and get a marriage license, and I gave Laura Graham's ring as a happy elopement gift. I did tell Mom vague details on what was going on, but Dad and Peter and company found out a few days ago. It's been a mess since then. Apparently, Uncle Peter's embarrassed and doesn't have face in front of Harry and his family. Dad's upset at me for helping them, but more so because I gave Graham special ring for something like this. He said one of us could have at least told them beforehand and not created the situation now. I won't even get started on what's going on within the extended family. Was I a hole for helping them elope and also give Graham's ring away? Some people are saying I shouldn't have brought myself into Laura's drama and my aunt actually said giving the ring away was the same as stealing it. 
Am I the a-hole for helping my sister elope and giving her my grandmother's special ring? You are a great sibling, not the a-hole. See also, am I the a-hole for making sure that at least one member of my sister's family cares about her as a human being and not just a way to consolidate power with another family? Not the a-hole, it was gifted to you. Sounds like a family heirloom, but seeing as Laura is your sister, it stays in the family too. It's way less risky to gift heirloom jewelry to the women in the family. I'll never understand a passing to the male side, and then there's major drama after a divorce. It's also the tradition for a reason. Women were gifted jewelry as a way to run if they needed to. Until recently, jewelry didn't go down in value after it was purchased like modern engagement rings. Women were given jewels because they are light, transportable, and generally considered one of the few things that actually belonged to her. I mean, not they hall to help them. They were going to do it anyway, and all people here have been adults for a long time now. Also, the ring is yours, and you are giving it to stay in the family, not to someone from the outside. I'm wondering though in which century you are all living, in which a dad tries to arrange a marriage and the only way out your sister and her boyfriend can think of is eloping. I'm assuming because of the names, and no note saying English is not your first language, that you are living in an English-speaking country, so arranged marriages are not a thing. I mean, we live in the 21st century, but my dad and his family probably live in the 15th. They've always been all about status and stuff, 